I got started in film and video production because uh, I was a DJ when I was in high school. I grew up in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, and all my friends were like artists and performers and stuff like that. And I was always fascinated by the arts. I was always fascinated by music. And I realized that you can make a lot of money having fun. My name is John P. Wheatley. I'm from the Virgin Islands. I own a video production company in Atlanta, Georgia. I got started in film and video production because uh, I was a DJ when I was in high school. I grew up in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, and all my friends were like artists and performers and stuff like that. And I was always fascinated by the arts. I was always fascinated by music. And I realized that you can make a lot of money having fun. One of the things that attracted me to DJing is being able to control the crowd. I would, I, I would step in, I would come, come after another DJ, and from the time I hit the turntables, it was just, people knew the difference. It was like, stop, start, party's on right now, I'm in the house, we about to turn it up. You know, party lit, as we were saying in the islands, we're gonna turn up. <laughs> so I went from rocking a crowd at 13, 14 years old on the DJ scene and curating playlists to curating visual images and rocking a crowd visually. And to me, from the time I got a taste of being able to create and visually tell stories and, and, and evoke emotions from people, I, I knew at that point that's all I wanted to do for the rest of my life is just be a creator, be an artist, be a storyteller, and to be able to create some of the most beautiful images that I think, you know, the world has seen. <laughs> So the process for me for creating when I get a script or when I get an idea and when a client comes to me with a project, I basically hear them out, right? I hear them out, let them tell me exactly what they want, what they see, what they feel, and then I kind of like tell them to go away. <laughs> and then I start writing, boom, boom, boom. Just start getting in that world. I start thinking, because as, as, as humans, God gives us this ability to imagine, right? So we can imagine anything we want. So from the time you give me a script, you give me an idea, you give me anything, a concept, I close my eyes and I, and I turn on that God mode, that genius mode, and I start to imagine exactly what I want to see on screen. My first camera I got off of Craigslist. It was a Canon Rebel 5 or Rebel XT or something like that. That was the first like camera that I owned. I bought it off of Craigslist for maybe like $300 with a kit lens. Um, but the first camera that I physically touched, I'm dating myself right now, it was the Canon XL1. <laughs> so for all my filmmaker, all my, all my filmmaker, cinematographer friends, videographers, if you know the Canon XL1 is what changed the game. From the time the Canon XL1 came out, it was a wrap. And then I went to like a DVX 100 and a Panasonic DVX 100, and I kind of worked my way up uh, the camera game until, you know, ended up with the Reds and the Canon and the Aries and stuff like that now that I own. So it started out a uh, $200 camera off of Craigslist. Um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's my story. <laughs> you, you know, you start off a project, you don't have anything. You have an idea and you get to sit down and you get to create and bring to life something that was not tangible before. Giving birth to people's dreams and giving birth to people's ideas and concepts is a thing that motivates me. That gets me high because then I get to see people, you know, walk in their purpose and, and, and feel good about something that they had that God put inside of them. And I get to help them bring that out. So that's the thing that motivates me, helping people to give birth to their dreams and their ideas and helping them to walk in their purpose. I'm doing it because I truly enjoy the craft. I truly enjoy the people. I truly enjoy my peers, um, and I, I love collaboration. Collaboration is important because I might not want to be writing <laughs> this week. I collaborate with somebody else who's writing. Collaboration is key because it, it allows you to be able to stretch out and, and relax in different places and breathe and take, take breaths and get to see somebody else's process, how they edit, how they design, how they create, how they write, how they direct, how they shoot as a camera op. So, you know, you, you learn. Collaboration is, you know, is good because you get to learn. Oh, that's how you do that? Man, I was doing it the long way. And you just showed me a shortcut because I collaborated with you. I was open.
to even be a, be, be a part of your space and be a part of your creative process. So collaboration is very important. That's some of my proudest moments when people continually call me back, when the people at Netflix call me back, when the people at Wild and Out call me back, when the people at, you know, Jesse Collins Entertainment calls me back. I feel like, wow, this is a proud moment because they're trusting in me. Those are proud moments, man, because people trusting you, that's, that's a big deal for me. Trust is important. And in this business, you really don't have a lot of room for error. So they know that their project is in good hands with me. You could overprice yourself and play yourself. And you could undercut yourself and play yourself. You gotta know your worth. Know what you're worth. Know what the market is asking and demanding and, and, and paying for a certain position. Know your craft. If you're a camera person, know your camera inside out. Don't let nobody else on set know more about that camera than you know about that camera. If you're audio tech, know your bag, know your audio bag, know your mixers, know your mics, know your frequencies, know everything about that. Nobody's supposed to know about your job more than you do. You gotta be the expert. And the number one key to longevity and production is being an asset. If you're an asset on set, you'll always have a job. If you're a liability, you're gonna get hired one time and I'm never gonna look back and I'm never gonna hire you again. And I might talk about you <laughs> to my friends and they won't hire you. You have to be so knowledgeable about your craft and about your lane that you're, you become an asset and once you become an asset, you're always gonna get hired.